Right, just about ready. That was a nightmare. I had everything set up and then my sound broke uh, and I had to restart. So everything went all wrong again. So I think I'm good now. And I had to change the title, which is why you got to stop and start. And I'm drinking some Copperberg tonight. That's the thing. Uh, so good evening, guys. Welcome to Thursday. Let's quickly go through the hellos and then I'm just going to very quickly show you the, the spectrum. Uh, before we get going, so let me just say hello to everybody. Hey, Steps, Mr. G, I'm up, click that Kev. Uh, 2007, Andy Magic Knight, Fitrend as well. Uh, Russell Mills, True Tonys, all the, all the usuals here. Hey, it's Maker, SP175, Cake Apocalypse. Uh, uh, Kenneth Myra, welcome. Uh, Zendarek, Quadrasol. Hi, guys. All right, so before we start, I wanted to show you um, this. So this is all working now. Um, I made the mistake um, of reading the PIN numbers, uh, the GPIO, GPIO PIN numbers on, on, the, uh, on the document that I was following as pin numbers on the actual header, and that's not what they were at all. Um, they were GPIO numbers. So just rearranging the right pins, uh, the right kind of numbers, fixed all that. Uh, there was one dry solder joint on on the board that I connect the, the keyboard to, uh, so some of the buttons weren't working, so I fixed that. And then what I've done, although it's kind of, it probably can't really see. Oh, shit, let's drop it. You probably can't see. Oh, yeah. You See, so I've added these two buttons here. Uh, the little, probably can't even clicking actually, little clicky buttons. Um, one of them is for the keyboard. I'm not sure what the other one does. I need to read the doc read the documentation to find out exactly what it does. Sorry, I pressed the wrong button then as I push that forward. So I just want to quickly show you uh, how it works, uh, and then and then we'll uh, crack on with the check and noise stuff. So. So let me put it in capture mode and turn it on. So one of the buttons is um, is to so because the keyboard doesn't have function keys or arrow keys. Uh, so the the right hand button at the top switches between um, F1 to four on these buttons and then arrow keys. The arrow keys are actually marked on the, on above the thing. Um, so that's just so you can open the fuse menu and do stuff. But I'll just very quickly demonstrate how I can, I can do all that without a USB keyboard and then, and then we'll, uh, crack on with the check and stuff. I'll be giving this away very soon as well. Um, so there we go, we're on the menu now. So if I try and press the arrows now, nothing happens. So if I press this right hand button, it switches into arrow mode and I can, I can actually look through these and go in and, and I can, uh, then switch back and you see all the buttons are working now. Oops, missed the eight there we go. and the five, might have been too fast. So yeah, it's, it's all, it's all good. Um, I really don't like the rubber key keys on the spectrum, but, um, yeah, each to their own, I guess. Um, and then if you want to load a game, you press the button again to go into F key mode, press one, uh, and then you can use the arrows to navigate this menu. Like so, and then we can go over to home here. I uh, set it spectrum. There okay, we've got all the games. I mean, I'll just pick one at random. ATV simulator seems good. Yeah, oh, couldn't find that. So there's you might need some kernels for certain things, but um, most games should should work. I mean, typically that one doesn't, but. Oh yeah, it does work. It's probably just missing one of the things, but there you go. So, so that's fully working. So I'll be giving this away uh, very soon on stream. 
Um, which leads me on to my next point. I, there won't be a stream this weekend um, because I, I've got to build some stuff inside my computer. Uh, and I don't know if that's going to be uh, ready in time. Uh, so I'm just not going to commit to doing stream. Plus, it'll give me a, a night to test it and, 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 and kind of play some games and just have a relax, relaxing night for once. Uh, but on the following Saturday, so not this Saturday, uh, which will be, what, the 7th? So on the 14th of November, I'll be giving this away um, on stream, uh, along with, uh, I'm also going to get with it as well. I'm going to, I know it doesn't really match it, but uh, I'm going to give away this little pad as well for it as well. So you've got some kind of joystick uh, and all the all the connectors you need for this as well. So the HDMI, the little USB extension uh, and the USB power supply as well. Um, so yeah, I'll be giving that away uh, next week to one lucky winner. Uh, yes, let me give you all the shillings and let me do the uh, start the quiz. So that that uh, that giveaway will be open to uh, ev everybody watching uh, w with the correct amount of channel points. So please make sure you save your channel points. Um, it'll be the same price. I can't remember what the price is. Two and a half thousand, I think, per ticket. There'll be three tickets. Oh, the other thing I got as well before we start. I got my I got my Pi four hundred as well. It's a really really nice piece of kit actually. It's nice and nice and compact. Um, it's 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 kind of weighty but not too weighty. It feels nice. Um, so this is going to be my my tick eighty um, machine when I once I get it set up. I just not had time time to do it. Okay, let me uh, make tickets forty eight thousand. Yeah, right. Let me start the races, and then we'll we'll crack on with the uh, check noise. So, right, races are on. Yeah, it's uh, it's really good. I'm I'm quite pleased with it. Ooh. Annoyingly, I have just ordered a case for a Raspberry Pi which has a keyboard on it. Uh, it looks a bit more kind of retro than this, um, and it has a little mouse pad on the side, so. Um, I will still use that case for a Raspberry Pi 4, which I've got two of over there. So, um, but I'll use this one for the Tick 80. But this is a, uh, this is going to be nice. I think it's going to be nice, and it, it feels good. It's not, it's not cheap. It feels like a very nicely built piece of kit. Surprisingly. Oh, well done, Kev. Okay, right. So let me go back to here. Oh, I was already on that one. And let's take a look at where we are on the on the on the game. So what I seem to remember from last time is we need to look at um there's a bug with the persistence data. I think it should be a fairly easy bug to fix, but we'll we'll take a look through it. So the bug is if you go off screen and come back in certain things cut into the scenery so it's i think it, what it is it's it's mines cut in below and these cut into the left so so all of these should be all right sorry to the right so i think all of them will be okay but that mine there won't be that mine will cut in at the bottom so you see it has them there so it's like the mine is cutting away a three by three And that's cutting away a two by four. So I think what's happening is is these spikes are being treated like these, um, and these are being treated like the large mines. And I think that's all all that the problem is. So we can quite easily fix those. I was thinking about this last night, and I, I'm pretty sure that's what's going on. Um, collectible appeared in the screen. Alert. Yes, I need to. Yeah, that's one thing I need to do as well. We, as there is a reset routine. Uh, we need to make that actually be used because at the moment it's not resetting them uh when we move off screen so 
Uh, again, again, pretty easy to do. So I think that's what we'll do tonight. We'll get those those little things in place, um, and then we can start thinking about um, individual level stuff. So um, what I want to do once we've got these working, although I do need to chase Andy for the uh, for the map uh, as, as well. Uh, I mean, I think he's given me, I think he's given me the base map. I need to check, but um, I I need to kind of set this laser up here. So there's a laser which swings from from here uh down to here and then across here again but it touches these and gives off particles and stuff so that'll be an interesting challenge and and it's the sort of thing that we need to do on each screen or there's the masking area so this the kind of dynamic collision being able to define rectangles of the screen where there is no collision um so you can go behind scenery and masking as well so i'm not sure i'm not sure which one we're going to approach first um it depends whether or not I get the map from from Andy or not. I think probably the masking because I think that's um, uh, we can do that without actually having uh, having the latest map. So yeah, ma <laughs> masking indeed. Yeah, I'm not sure what type of masking to go for. Um, I, I was thinking cookie cutter masking, but I don't think there's much point in doing that. I, it doesn't really matter because it's black and white anyway. I can just get away with a black, um, a black sprite over the top of this this player, really, um, and just have it move around at the right right positions. Should be fine. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I need to have a think about that bit anyway. So, um, okay. So let's let's have a look at this persistence. So I think what's happening is that we've got a routine. Uh, just find where that is. Let me get some views up so I can see two columns. No, I'm not sure where the persistence is, but let's uh, let's have a look at the screens because as these load in, this is the persistent stuff here. Uh, but there is something else when that I think it's part of the map loader actually. Let's just keep that one open there. Let's look at the map loader. Persistence removed. So I think it's this here that's doing things wrong. So if I if I just get rid of that uh, and then just run it, then what we'll be able to see. If we're getting rid of that, the, the items won't be removed. So even though I kill them and leave the screen, when I come back, they'll be there again. Uh, but it will it will give me an idea that I'm looking in the right place. Pretty sure that's the right place. So what I think is happening is these mines are being treated like these ones when it comes to removing them from the screen. These are two by two. These are three by three. So what's happening is when it removes them down here to redraw, um, because so, when, whenever you load the map, it draws everything. And then this persistence remove will check the persistence list and say, these things aren't actually on this screen anymore. Remove them. And what it does is it draws spaces over those things. But I think what it's doing is when it gets to these mines, it's drawing a, a block of three by three spaces rather than two by two. Uh, and when it gets to these, it's drawing a block of uh, four by two uh, instead of two by two. It's treating these as if it's these, um, these power up pods here. Actually, let me try destroying the power up pod because maybe that's wrong. Maybe they're all just in the wrong order. Oh, it's just not going to matter on the screen, is it? Because I've just turned the persistence off. So, so when I come back, everything should still be there. Yeah, it is okay. But obviously, I can't shoot it now because it's its persistence data is, is cleared. So, okay. So this is the routine I need to do. I just want to check um, the power up pod to see if that reappears properly. I'm sorry, disappears properly. <sighs> yeah, so the, the reason I want to rebuild my computer at the weekend is um, the 1390 is getting really hot in there. The case that I've got is not really designed for air cooling. Uh, okay, so it's been removed properly. So it's just these two, I think. Um, 
yeah, the case that I've got is not really designed for air cooling, and the 3090 runs super hot. Um, so my, are you going to fix the spawn? In po- yeah, let me do that, actually, because it's bugging me a bit, that as well. Um, yeah, when when I run the, the 3090, it runs at about um, 90 degrees when it's, when it's uh, on full load, which is pretty damn hot, so... Um, I don't really want to uh, keep it at that temperature. Okay, I'm going to move it across and move it to the top somewhere. So let's see where we spawn. I'm just guessing now. Oh, thanks for the subs. Oh, sub. Oh, wow. Amok, you're on a mission again. Stop it. <laughs> Thank you for the gift subs, Amok. Uh, and welcome to the subs to Monsters Go Boom, Monsieur Dieu. Zap Italia, Monopoly 79, and Worm Juice Dev. Appreciated, appreciated. And thank you very much, Amok, for that. That was, wasn't a bad guess with that position, actually. I'm just going to nudge it over ever so slightly. Uh, and... What's this song? Yeah, that's pretty good. I like that. <laughs> hey, Gareth, 11.30. Welcome. Okay, that tune is annoying. Oh, my. I think Hayes has been looking at Bog's tunes and, and finding ridiculous ones. Okay, so let's have a look at the persistence stuff. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to be that code. And I think it's just, I can't remember how we determine uh, what's what in here. Um, but you can see there's these three patterns uh, and it needs to, it needs to destroy things based, uh, it needs to remove things based on those. Unfortunately, I can't remember how it's removing those, so. Okay. So here are our, um, oh, here we go. So here's our, here's our three removals. If I a match that needs removing, how does it know which one to go to? Oh, from the accumulator, okay. What? Uh, okay, so this is this is columns and rows. So if it's zero, it goes to there. So what is this persistent lookup, comma, y? Okay, so this is the last digit in the persistence data. So let me have a look at the... Oh, I think it's because I changed the persistence format slightly. Okay, so, okay, this is fine. Um, let's need to find the actual export. This persist. So this is a persist data. And why is it these values? Let's look. Why is it this one set here? How does it know that I oh, see look four four spike mine six spike mine, but how does it know? This is the problem. These are these are sharing the same. So that needs to change. A bonus pod. Hmm. Should have documented how this works, shouldn't I? <laughs> Damn it. Oh, maybe I did. Um, yeah, maybe I did somewhere. Hang on. Okay, so this is definitely the, the area that we need to change. Uh, but it's based on this number here. Uh, and looking at this, two of these things share the same number. Um, I think I think this digit here is whether or not the item um, explodes is an entity of some kind. Uh, but I need to look that up. Um, 
Okay, so first, I guess what we need to do is work out how those are implemented. So let's have a look where the uh, add items is. Let's hit piece. Well, actually, hit piece is no, it's not actually, is it? Because persistence remove. Well, actually, we can take, we can look at the the generating script to work this out. It's probably the easiest way of doing it. Oh, is it this number here? Okay, so barrel. No, it's not. This is a good tune. This this afterburner. Where is the data? Where is the where is the actual output data? Uh, screen files, persistence files. Here we go. Here we go. So X Y H P bonus value plus shake screen. Okay, so shake screen. Shake screen is this digit. So this is if the thing explodes. If you kill it, do we need to shake the screen? So that's what these are. Um, and bonus is the value is the rest of the value. Bonus value plus shake screen. Okay, cool. So that means up here. Uh, okay, so we have mine, four spike mine, and six spike mine all sharing the same value here. Um, whereas I think all we have to do is change this one, I think. I don't know why barrel and bonus pod are sharing the same, but... Um, Um, hang on, does this mean, are they detected? Maybe they're detected like this as well. I really should have documented this well. Okay, let's check the uh, player proximity thing, which I'm guessing is in entity, but then these are not, are these entities? Yeah, they are, aren't they? Register entities. Or they could potentially be entities. The mines are entities, that is. Okay. Well, comments and code your friend. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. I should have done that. I should have done that. I'm just going to change that to a force earth to six white mine and just see what effect that has. If the if the mines are still working here, then it's just a matter of changing these digits slightly to deal with this in a different way. Um, Oh, it helps to repress the right button. There we go. And hello, Jason, as well. <laughs> okay, that seems to be working. That seems to be working. Okay, so everything's still working with those values. Persist data should now have four on the six spike mines, which it does. Okay, that sh that's probably enough, actually. Right, so it wasn't that difficult to work out, to be honest. Um, but I might put a comment here to say, uh, node, uh, node type for screen shape. Um, Just copy that and then I'll trim it down.
How's everybody's Thursday been? I've been off this this past two days. It's been nice. I've not had to worry about things. I've been able to sleep in bed a little bit longer. It's been nice. Gave me a chance to mess with a 3D printer a bit. I'm actually printing uh, cartridge cases at the moment. So I'm trying to do my own uh, cartridge cases. A Friday yeah, for you, yeah. For Doc, no, um, just in general, I just want to see if I can print them. I, I mean, I've got a couple of cartridge cases anyway that I bought from a Polish site. They were fairly cheap, but. Uh, they're quite boring looking um they they're very plain very very uh flat so i wanted to i wanted to just print one um from a uh from thingiverse site one that you know had a bit of kind of decoration on it um just to see how well it prints and whether it makes a good cartridge case and then if it is i can i can um do my own cartridges as well so um Thank you for the follow, uh, Sawi00. Zero zero. Yeah, the problem with the cartridge cases, and this is the reason why I want to do them, is they're quite expensive to buy. So I think they're like four or five pounds from, uh, from most sites. Um, the ones I found in Poland were worked out about 70 pence uh, a cartridge case if you bought about 30 of them. Um, but they weren't um they, they weren't very interesting they're quite boring plain cartridges um they're the ones i did all the luma luma carts on so um but yeah with, with this with the 3d printer i can technically do any design i want on it so i could print you know anything on it that i want to okay so um with this in mind the first thing i notice here is that this value uh, needs to be uh, have this value removed from it so we're going to end it with 7f um because obviously the screen shake was um the the screen shake flag was something i added um after i'd done this code originally so um we just need to end it to get rid of that and then we can do some checks so um and this all this is doing is checking to see what size uh we need to do things at so if it's uh so two by two, so that would be a uh, barrel spike uh, mine, four spike mine. Uh, so everything zero, one, or two. So actually what we need to compare here is compare it against three and branch of carry less than we go to set remove column. Uh, so this is, th this is the point at which we say, okay, we're done. Uh, we've got the right column value. So if it's zero, one, or two, we know that that's correct um, because that's this, this, and this, and this, um, which are two by two. In fact, let me line those up. So uh, just in the comments, uh, then this would be uh, four by two. Uh, and this is three by three. So we do another check, um, which jumps to here and sets X to four, um, if true. And that's this one here. So um, what we need to check is for the number three. So we can just check if it's number three, uh, if it's equal to that jumps there. That should solve the issues, I think. That's all we need to do. So let's give that a try. Good day today. Just trying to update the kick assembly of VSC has improved massively. Now does namespace and scoping, which was missing before. Okay, that's good. I mean, I'm, I'm glad it's getting there. I, I'm still a little reluctant to try it in, in Visual Studio Code okay, just because I've got so used to, uh, to using it in this. Um, but saying that, I'm, I mean, I'm, I might give it a try at some point. Um, I would have liked to have had proper Mega 65 support in the individual studio code, but um, I ended up writing my own stuff anyway, so. Okay, that looks fine, actually. That's pretty good. Okay, let's 
So next we need to make sure those stars disappear. Yeah, look at that. That's spot on. Awesome. Now, there was one other thing I remember. Uh, great stream, by the way. I have no idea how you do this without constant, swe constant swearing. Oh, I do swear constantly. Um, if you ever join one of the uh, Tuesday Game Boy streams, that's basically all it is. It's just me swearing for, for a couple of hours. Okay, we've still got this issue down here with this mine and this mine uh, appearing. So we need to figure that out. Uh, I have no idea why they're doing that. Uh, so that's going to be one of the next things. But first thing I want to do is just turn those um, those stars from disappearing, uh, from appearing on the next screen. So that should be pretty simple to do. Uh, so let's go and take a look. Um, we have... Uh, items there we go and there should be a reset routine in here and there it is uh we just need to call this and this is just going to make sure that our stars reset when we go between screens and map loader i think does that uh which i've got open here so let's have a look i can't remember if i do all the things at the beginning here no this is load map maybe it's before this Let's look for the word reset in here. Um, next screen, here we go. So we do a decals reset, uh, kill particles. So we can do the same here with items dot reset. And that should reset our items as well. Uh, oh yeah take care as well i'm sure you've already gone but um take care okay so let's let's get some items on the screen and then exit the screen and see if they if they disappear on the other screen this should do yeah they do awesome check with the 100s as well Cool. That's looking good. All right, cool. So that's that's the two two of the three bugs fixed. So the other bug is over here. So let's work out what screen this is then. Um, so I can start on the right screen. I'm going to start on this screen here. Uh, thank you for the sub, DarkJ75. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well. I've been watching the uh, Mega Sixty Five site like a hawk as well. Uh, not the Mega, the uh, the Trends Electronics site because it's been said that the few people have been getting uh, the the shipping has begun. Um, but I I've been watching it and my my order is still in the same um, same state, so mine hasn't been shipped yet, so, which is a bit annoying. But I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, hey, Spacey and Zed, uh, good morning as well. Yeah. It still blows my mind that people on the other side of the world want to watch a, a weird northerner, a weird alcoholic northerner. <laughs> Thanks for the resub, Booney. Appreciate it. Um, okay, uh, so let, let's try and start on this screen. So I think this is going to be screen... Uh, Seven, I think. I don't see screen seven on there. Oh, there it is. Yeah, seven. Okay. Uh, remember where the screen actually loads in now. It'd be in the main game, the main uh, this thing here. Uh, Probably need to set the position a bit now. Also, one thing we need to do think about soon as well is the the kind of uh, the Robotron style screens because there's some there's some quite crazy screens that we we need to deal with, um, and they're going to be quite performance heavy. So there's a few tricks I'm going to try on those, um, kind of partly to do with uh, multiplexing uh, sprites, um, but also kind of finding ways to combine sprites together as well. 
um so almost like uh, having a uh kind of like we do with the with the particles okay that's the wrong wrong screen and the wrong position as well so let me just nudge it down a little bit so so kind of like we do with the um with the particle system where we have 16 characters that are drawn all over the screen uh depending on where the particles are we can have we can have the same thing with sprites as well so we can have um our multiplex sprites uh which we can i think we can probably have about 20 in the multiplex so that, that behave in this way um and inside them we can draw smaller enemies uh we may be able to to set sprites to use um like uh, we can load in a whole bank from the cartridge just for the sprites and have pre determined position so if you imagine two enemies in one sprite you can have them on top of each other which means you'd only see one so you could use it as one or two enemies on top of each other and then if you just move the other sprite um and say in three pixel increments across then you've got eight positions that way and you've got uh what six positions down this way so you can create with 48 sprites you can create um two sprites in in 48 different positions within that sprite and then you can use that to build up um a much kind of tight tighter packed uh set of enemies whether or not it'll work i don't know i have to have a think about how that's gonna work if at all it may not uh, don't forget the freaking lasers oh, that's cool spacey i'm glad enjoy 8-bit 16-bit coding yeah me too even more so now and i'm not actually coding for my job it's kind of it's kind of nice i'm feeling a bit more um a, a bit more kind of experimental i actually downloaded unity the other day as well i've never actually used unity other than glancing at a couple of scripts here and there um and i think i used it way way back in the day um before it kind of became what it is now uh, so i downloaded it the other day just to see um it's super easy as well so who knows maybe one day i'll do a unity game as well all right there we go that's a good position right so okay didn't trigger anything that way hmm interesting doesn't seem to be triggering anything this time. So let me go into the other screen. Maybe it's to do with, I think we had this problem last time. It was hard to replicate. So I'm going to trigger everything that I can here. Go off this screen back in here, stuff like this. Just try and replicate what happened last time. Oh, I do need to check this, make sure this is exploding correctly. Yep, it's fine. Bit Nirvana, awesome. Yeah, see that I have no no idea why that one triggers at all. But for some reason, occasionally that one down there triggers. And I don't know why. My suspicion is it's something to do um, with MSBs of the sprites. So if you imagine, if you imagine, why would it be, why would it trigger this one? Because the Y position would be completely wrong. Although I guess I'd still be in range, I guess. What's the range like? Nah, not that much. yeah i'm not entirely sure why okay we'll just have to keep an eye out for that and if it happens again we'll just have to try and replicate it somehow i i'm not entirely sure how that happens oh there's these things as well we do need to make these actually do something at the moment they don't do anything um so these are like uh little turrets that fire um fire stuff at you so the the turrets themselves will just be characters 
Um, but what they'll have is a little sprite which kind of aims at you, and then when it shoots, it will it will kind of detach and come towards you. I think it detaches. It may clone itself and come towards you. I'm not sure, but um, so there needs to be a little kind of sprite method here. Uh, we don't actually have any sprite to sprite collision at the moment, so that's going to be something. Uh, I, don't, I don't think we do. Let me just check up here. Pretty sure we don't. Yeah, it's no sprite to sprite collision. So that's going to be something we need to do at some point. Uh, there's also um, walls as well, like laser walls that appear here, and there's a swarm that appears here. So, so even before we kind of get um, get into very like screen specific stuff like the lasers. There's stuff that is used everywhere. See, look, both of those triggered them. And none of those should have triggered. My day job tends to be working in Unity these days, which I enjoy, but I do find noodling around on C64 cathartic. Yeah, um, is it to do with the persistence from the other screens on a duplicate object index? Uh, possibly. I, I'm just thinking now that I, I, I need to check what actually where the the kind of um position lookup is done it could just be that cause think of it this way right when i when i enter this screen my character is actually being slid from here all the way across the screen to here so i think what's happening is that one of those values is uh is triggering uh the mining in one of the um persistence updates or something Uh, I don't know why it's happening over this side. Yeah, the the little bit I've looked at of Unity seems seems pretty easy. It's it's definitely easier than it used to be. Um, so yeah, watch here. No, see, it didn't trigger that time. Also, the 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 position of the blocks is wrong here, but that's a, a minor thing. Okay, this is going to keep cropping up, isn't it? I, I need to figure this out. Uh... Oh, wow, it's amazing how quickly the, the screen gets spammed with stuff. All right, let's see if we can replicate this. So there's two places where this seems to happen. One is here, didn't happen. So let's try shooting stuff like Andy says, maybe some persistence on certain screens. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I think I know. I think I know why. Okay, so I think what's happening is if the mines start ticking down, at least on, on this one particular screen, if the mines start ticking down, then the mines that get set on the next screen um are already active the, the the active flag has been triggered if you like so we, we might need to reset that active flag now i think the same way i think i know how to do this now so if i go in here and i i set one of these off and then exit the screen quickly yeah that's it okay so there is an active flag right so if i if I set a, a flag to be um, a mine to be active, uh, then a flag gets set and it, it, it carries on being active until the timer runs out. If I if I don't blow it up, uh, or if I leave the screen before it actually blows up, so these two never blew up, and then I go into another screen where there is a mine. When that mine gets when that mine gets set. It's not actually resetting its timer. 
So it didn't happen on this one, but that could have been the values of the, could be the indexes, because the indexes would need to match basically. So what I think here, if I make these trigger, okay, there's only one there. Uh, let, me, let me restart. Whoops, wrong button. Every time I press that, okay. Why is the restart button on this actually? Interest. Oh, great. Cool. It doesn't have one. Oh, yeah. Alt F9. Okay. Nope, that's recording. Okay, I'll just restart manually. Oh, was that more uh, spammers? I missed that. Thank you for, for that, Steps. Okay, so uh, that's the problem with GeForce Experience. Yeah, it just overtakes the uh, overtakes the uh, the keyboard shortcuts. But it's fine. I'd rather have the keyboard shortcuts. I do like uh, recording and stuff. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trigger all these mines, and then before they explode, I'm going to go into the next screen. That's the problem. Okay. Once more, just to confirm that that's the issue. Um, actually, twice more. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and go into the next screen without triggering uh, the mines in that screen, uh, and then I'm gonna do it again, so I, I can consistently recreate the issue. So I don't think I'll ever see the issue here because I'm not triggering anything at this point. You see, now I've got these triggered. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that these are blown up before I go into the next screen. Okay, now if I go in here, those are fine. Okay, and then one more time, but this time I'm going to trigger them. I'm glad I figured that out. That was bothering me that that might take a while to sort out. It's very easy to fix. Um, okay, so these ones here. Cool. So there is a tiny issue here, I think, that is going to be a problem, which is we have in, uh, where is it? We have this value here, which is the is active, and this is what determines whether or not the, um, the thing should tick down or not right which is fine this is we can clear this and it will it will stop ticking down but what that means is if you if you trigger a mine leave the screen and come back the mine will have been reset um which while is is not a, a terrible thing might not be consistent with the uh with the game and because we only have this persistence data here uh, we don't have anything in here to say that this this thing is active. Uh, we could maybe use the upper byte of the hit points here to say that it's been activated, um, so that on the next screen it is, it continues its tick down. Um, but I, th I think it's quite a minor thing, and it should be fairly easy to fix if we need to. Um, so for now, I'm just going to make I'm going to get rid of the bug, um, and I might start making a note actually. It's my make a note in here uh, where's my pen I'll, I'll grab a pen when i have a break um and make a note to start changing these things did you also have some occasions where triggering the mine leaving and coming back meant that the mine didn't trigger the next time you were close to it uh shall i probably take a break soon then there are like three races in a row <laughs> Oh man, you're addicted to the races. Um, did you also have some occasions where, well, let's have a look at that actually. So, so let's try triggering a mine. Uh, now I think they do, they, they will work fine. Um, it's only, 
the only time I had a problem was if I didn't remove the mine. So, so like here, if I if I can get off the screen before it, no. Oh, see the explosions. Explosions are not good. Need to make those be removed as well. Okay, so like here, if I trigger them, come back. Yeah, I can, I can definitely re-trigger them, that's fine. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, explosions was definitely one that... I say it's kind of hard to do because they the explosions happen so quickly, so... Okay, let's uh, let's do that. So I I think all this needs to be is in our uh, entity reset. We just need to make sure that these values are cleared as well. Uh, so this is data zero and data one. Uh, oh, actually, there is no reset in here. That's the problem. Deregister entities. Oh yeah, this is it. This is this is where it's done because it's done on a on a screen by screen basis, weirdly. Um there we go, that should work. So if this works, I will take a break. If it doesn't, I will break down. <laughs> Okay, right, so let's give this a try. Okay, so what we're looking for here is that I can trigger these, leave the screen, and not trigger these ones, which is fine. So yeah, the only thing is, is that it resets its state. If you leave the screen, it resets its state. This isn't a huge problem. Um, but we may want to change that in the future. Um, but that fixes that issue. Um, all right, I'm going to take a quick break. I'm going to have a think about what to do next because this is looking pretty decent now. Um, and then when I come back, we'll we'll figure out what it is we're going to do. All right, I'll be back in uh, five minutes, guys. Be right back. Uh, but I wouldn't have got that either. <laughs> oh, music went weird then. Well, that was the pet. Okay, so uh, how to think. Uh, I think what I want to do next is the uh, power-ups. Um, because it's a, it's another fundamental, what we really need to try and do is get all the kind of basic systems in place. Um, and this is one of the basic systems. So being able to shoot these things and get a power up out of them at the moment, they're just dropping these hundreds and they should actually be spawning, uh, power ups. So I'm going to start by, uh, getting the player back to the normal position on the screen. Making it spawn in the right play on the right screen, so that would be screen six. So I'm going to leave the border color changing because the border color is to do with uh, taking damage. We don't have a respawn yet, so that would be another fundamental piece of the the puzzle that we need to put in. Uh, we need to get all these fundamental bits in now, really. Oh, races, yes, yeah, sorry. I need to set that. I can probably set that to be automatic. I should probably do that. So it's part of my button pressing on my stream uh, stream deck. It's probably easy, quite easy to do, actually. Just never thought of doing it. Okay, so first of all, we're going to need some new sprites. So we're going to need some sprites for the power-ups. Uh, I'm just going to try and find one. I'm not going to animate it yet. I'm just going to grab one single sprite. Uh, Let's have a look. So assets. Oh, 
assets, sprites. No achievements. Please say he's called them power ups. Power up, here we go. Power up bubble. Alright, that will do. Just a bubble. Uh, okay, it's just a freaking circle. Ah, that's, it's barely worth barely worth opening the sprite editor for. Okay, uh It has things yeah, yeah, it does have things inside. Yeah, I, I get that. I'm just trying to I'm just trying to make something basic so that I've got um I've got something to display. We can fill it in with stuff later on, but uh I I think we're gonna have to make individual sprites for these. I think it would be kinda a bit of a waste of sprites in the multiplexer to to use two for each power up so it means we are going to use a lot of sprites for the power up, but they can be actually how i'm just trying to think if this is the best way to do this because you only really need one per screen one power up per screen i can't remember what happens when you die i know you drop some but i'm not sure which ones you drop um um okay let's let's uh let's load the the sprites in let's just create this thing i mean it's, it's almost I mean, I'm, I'm guessing here. This is this is the problem. Let's see what I'll do. Where's my asset right? Oh, it's in Steam. So I keep forgetting that, that my asset right is in part of Steam. So. Why <laughs> was this tune? Who finds these things? Yeah, it's a bit easier you now. Three, six, seven, eight. Okay, three. And then into three, four rows of two. Four. Okay, so this is going to need shrinking a little bit because it doesn't quite fit um, in here. This is actually uh, 24 by 24, which is 22 by 22 where you take the black outline out. out. So um, I'm going to reduce just the middle by one, um, which should be enough to, to get this to work. This is the kind of change that I have to kind of make quite a lot in this game to to compensate for things being not quite um, the right size. Uh, the other one being the, the size of the screens. The screens have to be 
uh, readjusted. Every screen has to be re kind of thought out in terms of enemy density, the actual dimensions of the screen, because the screens are 16 by 9 pretty much uh, in the original game. And obviously they're going to be 4 by 3 um, in this version. So, so that has to be taken into account. Uh, combined with the fact that um, by reducing this, the screen size, uh, if you don't reduce the enemy count, then the um, hey, mirror flip buttons, yeah. Oh, I could have copied and flipped, can I? Yeah, damn it, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right, all right, yeah, I could have done that. <laughs> That's fine, though. The buttons next to those. Oh, these things. Oh, oh wow! I didn't even I didn't even realize that. Wow. Okay. Oh, do you know what? Just just for the sake of doing it, I'm going to do it. So I would draw a quarter like that, uh, and then obviously that's going to be too big. So hang on. So. Nudge it across. Oh, it's just it's. Oh well, I mean it's six. Yeah, this is probably fine actually. Yeah, there we go. Cool, cool. Man, I didn't even realize they existed. I think in the past what I've done is used uh, is it paste inside, paste composite overwrite. That's the one. Um, like copied, flipped, and paste over. I didn't even realize those two buttons were there. <laughs> Quite bad. All right. Uh, color white. So this will be this will be updated, but for now I'm just going to put. Um, this power up in in it, uh, which is the the double shot, because um, we don't actually have a, a a power up system yet at all. We also need to work out the sprite order in here, and so things like shadows and stuff. I'm not sure we're going to need quite as much well, as I was originally thinking. I have no idea where things are being exported now, so there we go, sprites. Also, that looks a bit wrong, doesn't it? But uh, it, it's fine for now. Uh, can't come power goes in there, yeah. God, I remember this song. Do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, All right. So, so what we want is when we shoot this thing down here, instead of it spawning the one hundred, it needs to spawn a power up, which means we do need a new system called power ups. Um, we already have items and things, so it's going to be very similar to that. Um. In fact, items is probably the closest thing to it because it's something that's going to spawn, stay around for a little while, and then disappear. Um, so we'll probably use that system, but it probably doesn't need quite as many. So items has, uh, just looking at the constants, I think items has maybe 16 or so that it can have on screen at one time. Uh, we don't need that. Two or three is probably the most. I'll make it four just in case but I, I can't see it being it needing that much where's there oh it's there there we go uh max items 32 yeah see so we can have 32 of those but we, we're not going to need that many so i'm going to create one here i'm going to call it power ups uh section in here and we're just going to have four i think should be enough uh, but the system is pretty much going to be the same as items um, in terms of the data structure and the, and the way it, the way it um, oh, God. Oh. 
um, in, in terms of the way that it's going to behave. So it's not going to be in the particles section. I am going to really need to sort this out as well. Uh, it can go in the game section. I need to sort this out. So just paste that in, call it power ups, and then save it. And then we'll come back and sort that out. So the, the major difference between this and the items is um, items are done with characters. These are going to be done with uh, sprites. Uh, but the data structure itself is probably about the same. I mean, screen LSB and MSB will change to uh, an X and Y. We can use a half X so we don't have to, because we don't really have to do very much with the X position on this. Um, I think all it does is raise up slightly. I'll check the uh, video in a minute, but pretty sure all it does is raise up slowly uh, over time. So should be enough just to kind of have accuracy on the Y and, and not so much on the X. Um, and even then, I don't think we need fractional accuracy on, on it. Um, uh, well, actually, I'll take a look. Maybe, maybe we do. Um, actually, I, I'm going to put fractional actuary, accuracy in anyway. Well, no, it's only one extra byte. Uh, type will be the, uh, the the bonus that you're actually picking up, the bonus type that you're picking up. Um, yeah, okay, this this should be fine. I think four is probably enough for this in terms of max. Okay, let's make sure that imports in the game loop then. So, uh, not in the game loop, sorry, in the, the loader. I really need to come up with a better system for this. I don't like these debugs everywhere. Um, I, I mean, I'm doing it so that this down here um, has all the all the you know uh, the memory positions for these things to help me out because of the cartridge system. It's not as straightforward as just um, uh, you know adding labels to your your um, your your, your um, program counter origin commands. So. Power ups. So let's change these then. So this is going to be uh, X pos. Actually, let's, let's call it half X pos so it's obvious what it is. Uh, let's change this to max power ups. Uh, let's call Y pos. And let's do y plus frec before it um so the reason i do this before is so that i can just treat it like uh a little endian 16 uh, bit number i do all my adding to this value here uh, and overflow it into this one here i mean it, it doesn't really matter but it just makes it consistent with, with doing other the stuff here okay so these are the values that we need um, Pick up item I don't... okay, this is removing it if you collide into it, okay, let's get rid of that. We don't need that. We will need our own pickup routine, but it's not going to be character based it's going to be sprite based, and we'll probably use a hardware sprite collision as an initial check anyway um. This is another good reason not to have the shadow behind the uh, behind the player ship because that's going to skew the well. Actually, it just means that there'll always be a collision between two sprites, but that's fine because it'll always be the same two because of the multi the way the multiplex is set up. Uh, I'll have a think about that. I'm not I'm not too fussed about that now. I just want to make them spawn and and stuff. So. Uh, reset, okay, so this needs to stay the same. And this is just making sure that if you leave the screen and come back, uh, leave the screen that these don't, don't display anywhere else. Um, okay, I know one thing that's going to be needed here, which is a sprite index. Uh, because when these when these value when this uh, sprite is created, when this sprite is created, 
uh, when the power up is created, it's going to be attached to an index, and we're going to need that index in order to animate the item. Um, so add item. Okay, we're going to need that, but obviously this is mostly different inside here. So let's have a look. Um, we're passing in y and x. That can kind of stay the same. Um, but that's actually just going to go straight into these values here. Uh, we'll, we'll assume that x is half x pos passed in. So this would be uh, data next index. Okay, that's cool. Okay, so we don't need that. We do need the next index, and we would then store accumulator at data dot y pos comma y. Then we transfer x to the accumulator. Store accumulator at x pos comma y, and then we need to just clear the frac. Probably don't need to clear the fractional value, but um, let's do it anyway. So my eyes really itchy. I don't know what I've done. I don't know if I've rubbed something into that I shouldn't have done. I'll just keep that together up here as well. Okay, so don't need that. Uh, reset index. Okay, so item lifetime. So we need a power up lifetime. This is going constants. So something like this. Again, I'll just keep the same value from here. We can always change it if we need to. Uh, it's probably going to be the same as these anyway, I, I would assume, but who knows. Uh, it takes Shannon almost this much time. Wait. The port check on it's amazing. I think I think this is there are some parts of this that are going to take a while. There's like the screens that are going to be an entire stream just to do one screen, uh, probably more, probably two two streams. Um, I'm thinking uh, I can think of at least I can think of at least four or five screens that are going to be like that. Um, but there's there's almost certainly going to be more. Um, screens with kind of unique behavior that it's going to be very bespoke to that screen um, which is why we have the which is why we have these these uh, screen systems here so we can do it so for instance we've already got uh, a, a similar thing for the first screen so the little orbs that flash on top of the um, on top of the columns on the first screen uh, they're they're updated in this function here and the, the reason they're done there here and not anywhere else is because there's it's not um it's not really used anywhere else this thing so it's very screen specific code so there's no point having um an up in another update somewhere because every screen is going to have its unique initialization update and and, and deinitialization its exit code um so that that's just making sure that that re remains uh we do actually have to sort the persistence out for these screens so I just notice we've got persistence on here uh and then persistence on that one and that one. But persistence on this one is not loaded from the file. So I'm just going to do that now while I, while I spotted it. So it's perfectly fine if we don't have anything to just finish it with this. There's no point in, in including a persistence file if there isn't any need for one. So, um, so these are fine. Uh, but if there is a need for a persistence file, we should be including it in here. So this is persistence six, persist six. No, oh, yeah, same number as that, of course. Uh, that's just to make sure that 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 code that uh, data is pulled from uh, Charpad. Uh, good night, Gareth. Uh, take care. Yeah, I I intend on playing some games this week, and if I can get the the water cooler set in my machine in time. I find that I've been running my reservoir on the lowest possible pump setting as well, which would explain why the temperature of my CPU gets kind of high, well, high-ish. I mean, it goes up to like 60 or so, which is, is quite high for what I'm doing. But unfortunately, the little dial that turns the pump up is underneath, and I can't get to it without de de deconstructing my entire loop. So, well, deconstructing this part of the loop, which is basically where most of the water is so I have to kind of I have to drain it 
I had to drain it anyway to put my graphics card in. So, and I'm pointing to it like you know, but obviously I forget there's no camera on it anymore. Okay. Um, okay, so that's that screen persistence set up. Um, let's close everything else down except for the power ups. Okay, so power ups. Now we've got power up live time. Uh, ooh, why is that being loaded in there? That's interesting. Okay, let me just load items alongside this. Maybe I've deleted something I should not have deleted. Or maybe I'm doing something horrific. I've got a funny feeling I'm doing something horrific here. Oh, no, we're storing it there. Okay. So why is the type? Okay, so... Uh... Okay, so let's do that here. Store Y type. Which actually means nothing at the moment, but we, we, we need to set it up so that it's actually stored in the value here. Uh, calculate screen address. Okay, we don't need to do this because we're, we're just storing the value directly here for the sprite. So that can go. That can go. A store index for return. Okay, so... Uh, Okay, why why is it being stored in X register? That's weird. Uh, okay, I'm not sure why we're storing that in the X, but let's make it consistent. We're doing it in here in the X as well. I'm guessing we just use the X as a as a value at that point. Um, okay, so that's fine. So that's adding the item. Ah. No, it's not quite adding the item because what we need to do now is um, actually draw item really doesn't need to do anything. Uh, so let's let's go through this. So, so this should be add power up. Draw item we don't need to do because this is we're going to set this up in here, and the update is just going to move it. We don't need to draw it because it's just a sprite. So, uh, and we, which means we don't need to clear it either. So we can get rid of the draw and we can get rid of the clear. We don't need that, but we do need update. So all we need to do is is set it up. Set it up by adding it. <laughs> Thanks, me, Dolph. Appreciate it. Thank you for the bits. Goes towards things like this bottles of cider, which I'm running out of actually. Okay, so update power up is basically going to go through each of the power ups. Um, and if it's set, it's going to do this thing here, whatever this might be. Otherwise, it's just going to it's going to continue and exit. Um, so there is a remove where we, we set the value to zero here. Uh, I'm just going to get rid of this center bit here uh, and this bit here. We can, we can update this later. At the moment, we're just going to make sure that this actually is being triggered. Um, can update power ups, can update more than one. And that should be all we need uh, for now for the basics. Um, uh, thank you for the follow, uh, Marveler. Mar Ma Marveler. Marveler. Thank you very much. Where's the Mega City vibe? It's not here yet. It's not here, Cosmo. God damn it. Don't remind me of that. Yeah, it's not here yet, unfortunately. But it will be It will be fairly soon. I've got my Pi 400, though. Look at that. <sighs> Lovely. It's a really, really nice piece of kit. It's, uh, it's a really good feel to it. Good kind of weight to it. Uh, you know, it doesn't feel, doesn't feel cheap and tacky, um, feels well built. It's really nice, actually. It would be a, it'd be, be a nice little Christmas, Christmas present that for, for somebody. Um, good for, uh, kids to get into coding as well. So, um, well, it's just a Raspberry Pi with a keyboard. So I'm, I'm going to put Tick80 on it. Uh, so I've got a bare metal Tick80. So basically I'll have it. So as soon as you turn it on within three seconds, you're in a programming environment. Um, and a decent one as well that allows you to do some pretty cool stuff. So that's what I'm going to be doing with it. 
Um, <laughs> nice and famous. Oh, with the tick eighty stuff. <laughs> I do not love how out of tune this tune is. It's very frustrating. Which I know is why you play it because it is intensely frustrating. <laughs> thank you very much click tech kev and yes i hope your uh, cct4 comes tomorrow i don't think my mega 65 is going to appear till next week so at the earliest and yeah just to go back to what monsters go boom is saying tick 80 is a fantasy console like pico 8 Uh, but if you can imagine plugging this into into a TV and then running Pico 8 on it, you're basically only going to use half of the TV space because Pico 8 is a, is a square kind of aspect ratio. I don't think it's quite square. I think it's slightly wide. It's, it's more like a Game Boy. Um, maybe it is exactly square. I can't remember. But it's a square, it's a square, rate, square ratio anyway. Uh, whereas Tick 80 is more... Um, It is one to eight by one. Yeah, oh, there you go. It's exactly square. Yeah. Whereas Tick eighty is more of a kind of modern, uh, modern ratio. So it it fits, it fits the kind of idea of having um, a fantasy console that's kind of like an old retro machine uh, a lot better. So um, it's two forty by one three six. So is that just trying to work that out in terms of? Oh, it's sixteen nine then. I think. Looking at that, so almost six and two. Oh, my head, my head can't do that calculation. God, I've had too much of this already. I think it is sixty nine. Looking at that, it's one pixel longer. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, it means it will. It means it will output really nicely on a, on a on a, a decent screen on a wide screen uh, TV. So it's it's more suitable for kind of modern uh, modern displays, um, and it's it's kind of it's got less limitations as well. So you're not limited to 32 kilobytes like you are with uh, Pico 8. So you've got a bit more uh, room to do something interesting in. Um, but you've still got limitations. So you still have that kind of limitations which. Uh, do inspire kind of creativity uh, uh and kind of good game design well, or at least kind of force you to think about those things a bit more um but but with a bit more power when you're having pico 8 well quite a bit more power actually um okay right so this is the game loop so let's have a look we've got uh an init in here uh which we should be doing in here as well so let's let's do an init on these Power ups. Dynet. We don't need the enemy bullets in it now because that's uh, just part of bullets. We don't need to clear anything for these. Um, we don't need to draw anything for these. Uh, we just need to update. Uh, so we'll do the update kind of towards the end. We'll do it here. We'll do it the last thing in this section here uh, before the player control. I mean, this should just be Paris update, shouldn't it? I don't know why I've put the names of everything in here as well, but <sighs> fine, whatever. Because then this would just be update, draw, update, draw, update, draw, update, instead of update decals, draw decals, when it's got the freaking namespace in front of it to define what, already, what it is already. I'm not hearing this tune. Oh, yeah, okay, just about. It's very quiet though. So yeah, I'm <laughs> I'm kind of getting back into doing coding, but now I've got so many different systems I want to code for. Um, so I want to do something on the Tick eighty. I want to do something possibly in Unity that is kind of interesting me a little bit, mainly because 
it, it seems really easy to prototype stuff in Unity. So you can really, really quickly uh, generate something that, that might not have, you know, all the bells and whistles, but you can get an idea if your game mechanic is going to work very, very quickly. And I like that idea. Um, it kind of reminds me of uh, Game Maker. Game Maker was similar like that as well. But Unity is free, so... Well, it's free, free until you make money, so... Do a prototype, put it on Steam, be rich, yeah. But the the cool thing with, with Unity as well, uh, and with, with any of these kind of rapid prototyping kind of, or rapid kind of development tools, is if you want to do something for, say, Mega 65 or even the Commodore and stuff, you can use these tools to just quickly prototype the, the game flow uh, and and just make sure that your game idea kind of works as a game. Um, so even if I don't end up making a, a Unity game, it's going to be useful to know how to use it just to kind of prototype things very quickly. Um, okay, so power-ups, update power -ups. So now all we need to do is add a power-up. Uh, so what I'm going to do, uh, I'm just going to create an add power-up um on, on that screen so what's going to this one here so just in the initialize here i'm just going to call um and we're going to set some values in here so pardon me why is the type so this is just for debug completely for debug so um Accumulator, annoyingly, accumulator is our Y. Oh, no, that's right. Yeah, okay. Accumulator is Y plus X. Okay, so this is in sprite space, and this is halved. So the screen is 320 wide, plus 24 on that border over there. If you just ignore that border, it's A0, um, halfway across the screen. Uh, and then if you add half of the border, actually, if you just do it at A0, A0 should be fine, actually. That would be in the middle. <laughs> Um, who's that? Jessica Mack. Thank you for the raid, Jessica Mack, and welcome to the stream. Let's watch uh, the fuzzy bee chopped in half there by the chainsaw. Um, welcome to the stream, Jessica, and welcome everyone that's come along. I uh, hope you're doing well tonight. I'm uh, Shalom 50k. I'm doing some uh, Commodore 64 assembly. Um, we're in the process of porting. Um, uh a game a, a kind of well i say a modern game it's it's a modern it's, it was developed recently for modern platforms but it, it was a it's an homage to to old games so if there's a jessica Mac, does that mean there's also a jessica windows <laughs> uh does someone have cookies uh i don't know the mods maybe have cookies so uh so what have you what have you been doing tonight then, Jessica Mac? What have you been been up to? Thank you for the follow, Loafbone. Welcome to the stream. All right, let me just get this this piece of code in place. Uh, let's just put some some random in the middle. There we go. So it's our Y. This is our X. Uh, thank you for the follow, Enceladosaurus. That's a hard word to say. Did I write Checkanoid as well? No, I did not. Um, Checkanoid was written by a guy called Gareth Noyce, um, who, um, oh, what's the studio called? Triple A Limited. Triple Air Limited is his, his own studio. I believe he works for um, Rockstar Dundee now. For, is it Ruffian Games that got bought by Rockstar recently? I don't know if he still works there. Um, but from what I know, that was um, from what uh, what's his face was saying. Uh, yeah, Gary Lydon was saying that's that's where they were from. So, uh, so you have the source to work off. I have um, so Checknoid is available uh, on GitHub um, already. He he open sourced the uh, one of the initial kind of. Uh, the rm3 previous like, kind of early builds of it i think i mean it's complete but i don't think it's got everything that went into uh the final you know final release i may be wrong maybe maybe it does have the latest the latest stuff in here uh, but this is enough for me to get assets and stuff 
Um, and then I'm working with the pub, the, the guys who published it for, um, uh, for switch, uh, the, the publisher is doing all the mapping for me and stuff. So that's kind of cool. Uh, it just leaves me really to kind of play the game and try and replicate the, uh, the behavior in on the C64. Uh, thank you for the follow Alex Tengu. Uh, welcome to the stream. Okay. Let's, let's just give this a quick try now. So, um, we're not actually going to see the power up, even though it's been added to the update function. We're not going to see it because we're not actually generating a sprite for it. Uh, but hopefully the game still runs and doesn't crash, which is the, the important thing here. Um, for the C64 port, I don't have any code. This is all... Um, there's all written off my own libraries and, and things. Well, in fact, there's only really one library I'm using, which is my cartridge loading library. Okay, so the game loaded up fine. There's, it hasn't crashed or anything. Everything is still working as, as expected. You can still collect things, which is good. Still blow stuff up. Okay, this is cool. Okay, so... The next job is to assign a sprite to to that power up. Um, so that needs to be done in this add sprites section here. Um, we can do it here. This is the perfect place to do it. Um, we've already set things up here. And if we go and have a look at uh, the code for the screen, you can see that we we actually have some functions for doing these these things already. Some macros. Now I'm not going to use the screen macro here because it doesn't make sense. We we can't really use the screen macro because it needs to be dynamic data that's pulled from these. Uh, but we can have a look at how the screen macro actually adds a sprite and, and basically use uh, use that to add uh, a sprite here. Now, what we do need to do is uh, set frame as well, and we need to set the index up here. So we've got this sprite index here, which we need to use to, let me just set that to capital there, that's bugging me that. Um, we need to use that value to to basically do the updates here so we need to make sure we can grab that as well so we do have this get next free sprite and that looks like it returns a value in the x register okay so let's just have a look are we using the x register in here at all uh we use it here and we use the y register we, we need to leave the y register alone uh, we can use the accumulator in the X register. Okay, so <laughs> the Isengard. I do like this tune. I've got to say, I don't know why. It's just ridiculous. I like it. I'm going to take a break in about ten minutes to go and get another cider. I think I've got one left. So. Uh, okay, so the multiplexer get sprite function now, is this actually going to use, okay, next free sprite is using X and accumulate, so we're still safe with the Y here, so that's fine. Uh, I'll just close that screen down, have an academic screen macro, there we go. Okay, so now we have a value in the X register, um, which is our sprite index, so we can and transfer that to the accumulator and store that at data dot sprite index comma y. So now we know which sprite index we're using. Um, and that means we can set other things up here as well. So we've got xpos, we've got ypos. Uh, let's have a look in here. So we can set all of these values basically uh, because we've got the value in the x register. So and we can use the accumulator, that's fine for it. The only value we can't change here is the Y register. So as long as we don't use the Y register, we're fine here. Um, thanks for thanks for joining us uh, and see you again next time. I appreciate it. I'm sorry, I didn't read what you were doing as well. I noticed, you, I noticed you'd done that. I answered your question, your previous question, and didn't read what you're doing. Uh, just add an engine feature for your game. I, I did take, I, I had a look at your stream 
when was it? Was it last week or the week before? I'm pretty sure it was you. I think you were doing shader stuff at the time. Um, I don't know. I've got a terrible, I've got a terrible, terrible memory for names, uh, and a, just a terrible memory in general. So um, if it's not if it's not six five zero two, I don't remember it. Weirdly. Uh, a long raid journey. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Or have you been? Oh, I see. You've been through, been through several, uh, several streams. That's kind of cool. Uh, good night, Dark J seventy five. Thank you for thank you for joining. Okay, right. Let's see what do we need to set up. So we know the type that will be used to, to generate the frame. So for now, let's just set the frame, hard code the frame. So let's uh, let's set the frame value, uh, which is gonna be this one here. This is image four, uh, but I can't remember where these start in memory. Let me just check. Uh, someone has ripped off Luna for Tick80, really? Okay, that's kind of cool. Is it as good? Is it fast? And is it the same sort of thing called Witch em Up? Oh my God, that's even what I, that's the sub, that's the subtitle of, of Luna, a Witch em Up. Interesting, interesting. Oh, I might have to check that out afterwards. We are the Andy Magic Knight who says me, I like it, brilliant. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Uh, all right, I forgot what I was doing. Oh, yeah, I was looking for sprite locations. Uh, 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 game sprites start at D00. So that means the first sprite is 64, which means this one is 68. So that would be 44. And we can store that at to the top of the multiplexer. So that's data dot uh, frame comma x because that's the value we've got from here, uh, from this routine here. Uh, let's set the color to white. Now you might think we wouldn't need to do this all the time, but some of the sprites are going to flash between red and white. So it's a good idea to make sure that we reset uh, the color to white when we spawn it. This is only happening on an add power up. So it's not like it's happening every frame. Um, raster is an internal value, which is used. Um, Well, all, all these last three are internal values. These are all used by the sprite multiplexer to work out where the raster is needs to be in order to draw the sprite, sprite index, which sprite actual hardware sprite number it's being drawn to. And sprite D010 is uses the sprite index, the hardware sprite number, to work out what the D01 value that it needs to or or and into a position would be at this point. Uh, well, actually, it'd just be the just be the all value. The and the and would happen as part of the plexus. So, <laughs> oh great! I'm loving I'm loving all the uh, all the uh, Python stuff. Oh, the witch the witch stuff is amazing. I love that. Does Eldritch way the same as a duck? <laughs> So that means we just need to set these three. So we're setting two of them, set color and frame. Uh, we've got the Y pos up here. Um, so we can we can store that uh, straight away. Now, if I move this up to the top up here. No, I can't do that because we need those values here. All right, it's fine for it to stay here. Just means I need to kind of load this value in again. Uh, before I store it, so it's going to load that there and then store that up. Uh, 
Uh, now, the X value is half position. Uh, the reason for that, I see. I'm not even sure if we need the the X and the Y storing in the array. Uh, well, I, uh, let's store it anyway. We we may need it for some reason later on. So, okay. So what we need to do here now is uh, take the position, the X position. We need to double it now. So we're going to shift it all to the left. Yes, to the left. I need to get a, I need to get a drink in a minute, so I do this bit and then uh, shift it to the left. Now that will give us an X value and it will set the carry flag. So what we need to do here now is load zero and we can add zero to it. If the carry flag is set, that means the accumulator will end up being one. If the carry flag is not set, it'll end up being zero, and that means we can just store that value directly into uh, XMSB here. So that gives us our X position for the for the multiplexer to do its job, and that should be enough. That should, in theory, uh, let's just indent that ever so slightly and put uh, add multiplexed sprite. So I'm hoping now, when I run this, I should see a power up in the middle of the screen somewhere. Pardon me. Uh, something failed, but failed. Xpos not present on data.xpos. Oh, that's because it's not Xpos, it's data dot half Xpos. There we go. Let's have a look at that. Oh, wow. It's even called Witchmot. Oh, wait, this came before Luna. <gasps> no. Ugh, it's got lives as well. Oh shit, it is very similar though. Eh. Luna's better. Luna's better. That's kind of funny though, because that's like two years before I made Luna and yet it's got the the frame uh the name uh well witch mop. Which is weird. It's all a ripoff of Colden, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Um, oh, the the uh, the sixteen core Ryzen nine um, five nine fifty X came out today. I had to refrain so hard from. I don't need it at all. Um, but it just bugs me that I don't have the, the best one. So. But for what, for what, for gaming, it's no different at 4K than 3950, maybe one or two frames a second higher. Um, it's just the productivity stuff would be really, really nice. So, yeah, it does look incredible. Um, they, 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 they <laughs> I think, um, I think Intel must be crapping themselves right there. Okay, cool. There we go. We have. We have that there. I don't know why it's on. Oh, it's on that side of the screen because I did uh, the half value. So let me just double check that that works with my half that value again. So if I do this, it's like that. It should be in the middle of the screen now, hopefully. Yeah, there we go. Cool. I'm going to nudge it over to here uh, and we'll, we'll we'll work on making it rise up. But first of all, I'm going to go and take a quick break. Let me just nudge this over. Um, and I think we'll just about get the kind of... Uh, does there need to be any persistence for these? No, there doesn't need to be any persistence. But we do need to make sure that it animates and it's removed on the next page. Okay, so that should be fine. Um, that's just a reset thing. Reset probably just means we're going to have to make sure that these things are turned off at this point. 
um, which they're not in here. They, the data is just cleared, but there's no reset. So we'll do that. We'll do that next. Are you wearing pants? What are the scores? I've not had to look at the table for a while. Okay, cool. That's that's there. All right. So we'll on the next. Uh, I'll just go for a quick break, and then when I come back, we'll. We'll make this animate up. We'll check the video to see exactly what it does, but I think it just kind of moves slowly up the screen. So um, we'll make it do that. We'll make it disappear after a certain amount of time. Uh, and I'm pretty sure it's going to remain when I go to the next. Oh, no, it doesn't. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so the multiplex is clear in between screens, which is good. I think that's a multiplexer feature. I think it automatically clears sprites between screens, which is good. Uh, the the particles are not clear in between screens there. Some of them, some of them appeared over here. Um, all right, I'll let this race finish before I, because otherwise it's going to break if I, if I press the button. And now I go for a quick break. Wow, Bob absolutely floored it there. Okay, cool. Right, I'll be back in five minutes, guys. Be right back. I'm going to go and grab a cider as well while I'm at it. Be right back. All right, so I'm back. Stop the races. So I want to check. Um, in the game, what actually the bones, the uh, the power ups do? How long do they stay on screen? I keep using this video. Uh, I really do need to go through the code at some point and just check these things. Okay, so it does float up, and it looks like it floats up quicker. Let's let's go. Actually, I've got Steam open, haven't I? So let me. Uh, okay, I don't know why it's on the keys, but why is it not working on the joystick? Okay. Working on the joystick with something. So. Okay, so it only moves if you get close to it. So it stays still and then moves towards you. Okay. Let's just try that again. I want to know if it moves sideways as well. Okay, so it, it moves towards you within range. Okay, that's going to be interesting. And also, when you die... So when you die, the power up appears. Okay. All right. One last thing I need to check is how long does it stay on screen for? Has Vice grabbed the joystick? Oh yeah, maybe. No. 
Or oh, maybe it's using maybe it's using my flight stick or something weird. Just turn the music down a sec. Uh -huh. Okay, so what I'm interested in now is how long does it stay on screen for? Okay, it's about eight seconds. So actually, that needs to stay a bit longer than we've we've got it. But this is why I have this thing in here. Um, also, there's no timer reduction in here. So let me uh, let me just have a look in here. Okay, so yeah, we do need we do need this update. Okay, let's do this. Uh, and then remove needs to be a bit more than this, but let's just put this in for now. Um actually let's let's do it here as well. Okay, so using the x register here so we can't use the x register for that um okay so what we need to load is data dot does a power up move through solid background objects very good point uh i hope so i hope so it drops up to three power ups. Yeah, that's I've added four as the maximum, so I think that's probably okay. Um, yeah, it's a good point. I hope it. I hope it does. Um, I hope it does move through background, solid background. I should probably try that. Uh, did I just close the game down? I did, didn't I? Okay. Yeah, it's not, not picking that joystick up at all. Oh, hang on. No. So wait, I bet it's because I've got my flight stick plugged in. I bet that's what it is. Okay, so what I'm going to try and do in that case is hit it from here. Yes, it does. Thank you. <laughs> okay, that that is kind of a relief, and that's a this is a speed power up. So the first one we pick up is a speed power up. Okay, I'm going to leave that open because it's handy just to have it there, just in case I need it. Um, so I'm going to into Y here. And this is our multiplexer sprite index, so I've got to remember now how to turn the sprites off in the multiplexer. You need to set a frame of zero on a Y position of FF. Okay, so. Frame, comma, Y. And that's enough to turn it off. Um, yep, yeah, okay, cool. So that should remove it after the timer runs out. Uh, the other thing we probably want to do here. It's, if it's not being removed, we need to set the color based on something. So um, I'm going to grab the sprite index again here. Uh, and I'm going to do a comparison here of this. So I'll skip flash here. Compare this to, let's have a look how often it actually flashes. Game is looking on. Thank you. 
<laughs> I, wish, I wish this was it though. <laughs> this isn't. This isn't. This is the actual game. Just in case you did wonder. <laughs> so about half the time so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use this frame timer so this means that this frame timer is going to ensure that this only updates once every frame which means the data timer is going to run at half the speed then i'm going to change the constants in here uh, to make it four seconds, uh, which is going to be wherever it is here. Uh, so that will be a four second timer, which doubled becomes eight. Uh, so then if this gets down to half, which is going to be six, four, uh, then we can start flashing. So where I'm going to do that is in here. Otherwise, what we need to do is we need to uh, get the sprite index here, and we're going to take. Uh, we've still got the timer in the index here, so what we can do is if we just shift this to the right, uh, and then end it with O one, and then add O one. This is going to give us a value from one to two. Uh, changing this, removing this will make it faster, adding more of these will slow it down uh, and we can store that at multiplexer dot uh, data, is it data, lowercase, and that's, that's drive technology, color, comma, y, right, there we go. Hopefully now this will flash and disappear. Well, not the vice. <laughs> oh, you did just, <laughs> okay. Yeah, unfortunately that was the, uh, <laughs> that was the original. Okay. So something goes wrong here. Oh, uh, it goes wrong here. Because that was being skipped. There we go. Because I was using a branch instead of a jump. I just need to change the branch to work for me. No, oh, it's still not, still not working. Also, that's not actually right. It's not hitting that straight away. So let me just. That's the new stuff. Let's try it without the new stuff. Just see if it disappears. Okay, so let's just. Oh, no, it's crashed on me. Why is it crashed on me? So if it's equal to zero, it comes to here, it stores zero here, which means I don't need to do that as well. Um, Just get rid of that. Let's just see what happens. So this shouldn't do anything now. This should just uh, just keep loop, looping around. Yeah. Okay. So jumping into that function down here was causing a problem. So let's put that back in. Let's have a look. Oh yeah, let's change that to a jump. I don't think that's 
It shouldn't matter because this this should be fine, but transfer a wire to the accumulator. And load wire with our sprite index. So let's just put that back up there. I prefer that to be there. That's obviously it's for these two separate pieces. Uh, let's not do anything to do with the sprite. Let's just remove the type. Okay, we're not getting any failures here. So that would imply one of these things is wrong here. Okay, let's put that back in. And then there's a definite issue, definite issue. Now, why would any of these cause a problem? Let's get rid of that. Maybe it's just a positioning thing. Maybe um, it's it needs to be done at a certain position because of the sorting. It's very likely because um, it could just be getting stuck in a sort loop here. It's also exiting very quickly. Why is it happening so quickly? Uh, you change X and then decrease X. Where do I change X? Where? The decrease is there, but it's part of the main loop, so... I'm not I'm not changing it anyway, it's just the loop iterator here. Eh? Well, well, I don't I set it here, I use it as an index, I decrease it here. I never change it here. <laughs> See this is where flu bits would have helped. Okay, um, something's not right here, and I'm not sure what it is. Is this value wrong? Maybe this value is wrong. Let's, let's put a break on here and see what happens, see what sprite index it comes up with. Yeah, see, that is wrong. Very, very wrong. That value there is insane. That's that's way beyond. X is 15. Sprite index. Wait, what? Ah. <sighs> That'd be why. So we were moving backwards through this loop and it was starting at item 32 or whatever instead of 4. 
let's teach me not to pay attention. So I think this is probably going to be okay now. Also, we'd explain why the timer was over so quickly as well. Sometimes it is just a case of looking at code over and over again until the obvious, the obvious one line mistake pops up. And this is what happens when you copy paste code as well and to miss things. Okay, start flashing. Okay, it's not flashing. Um, nor is it disappearing. Okay, so let's let's have a look at this bit. Let's let's just force it to flash. So let's get rid of. Let's get rid of that there, and hopefully this should just force it to flash constantly. Which means that can go back to that as well. What's with all the Queen, Queen songs tonight? <laughs> This is a very good one, though. It might be... Oh, it's the Highlander one, of course. Okay, it's not even flashing, so I feel like this code is not... For some reason, this code is not being hit properly. Uh, ah, because the type is set to zero, and we don't want a type of zero, because that implies there is nothing there. It should be a type of one, so... This is one of the differences with the sprite routine. With the, with the character routines, that just means it wouldn't have been drawn. Um, but with these routines, it means that you're still going to create something. Um, it's just never going to update. Uh, so we need to make sure that we, we don't set a type of zero. So I think it should flash now. Which actually means we can set the flash timing correctly here. Oh, and it's not flashing. Why is it not flashing? So our type is one. Which we store here. And we store here as well. Oh, okay. So actually this this here can be simplified. So let me just simplify this. Oh no, can't actually. It needs to be No, it needs to be like that. That's annoying, all right. Uh, yeah, that's actually that's a really good point. I kind of want to watch Highlander now. Scorpion winds of change. I was trying to work out what this was. <laughs> Umper version of winds of change. No way. <laughs> I recognised the beginning. It was just it was bugging me what it was. So is it even getting to this point? Um, let's just make sure it's getting here because I feel like it's not even getting here at the moment. I believe this was at number one in the UK when, or no, I think it didn't quite get to number one because I think it was, uh, I think Brian Adams was at number one for like 16 weeks or whatever with his, uh, with his uh, Robin Hood song around about the same time, if I remember rightly. 
I might be wrong. Maybe it maybe it was just before or just afterwards, and it did get to number one. But I I seem to remember, I seem to remember this being in the charts, and also, um, uh, right said Fred as well. I'm so sexy was also another tune that never quite reached number one because of Brian Adams being in the charts for like a third of a year at number one. Okay. Um, so we're, we're not hitting, um, we're, we're not hitting that type value for some reason. Yeah, the bonus type should be set to one. So um, I'm going to put the break point um, here now and I'm going to check the value of X and I'm going to check the value of the accumulator um, and in here I'm going to put a break point here so we can see when it gets added so we'll know when it gets added the value is it gets added and whereabouts in the index list it should get added So any second now, right? Okay, so this is saying at the next zero, type one. Okay, so that's the right value in the list. Uh, where is this one? This is branch of equal. So that's down here, which is this one. Okay, so. Oh, interesting. So it should have loaded. Oh, no, we're, lo we're going backwards here. So it's on three. Two, one, zero, and it's on zero for some reason. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. So there is a problem here. So I'm just going to put that there. I'm going to move the break point slightly and try again. Yes, it made it number two in the chart with Brian Adams over there and doing being what yeah, I thought so. I seem to remember it was it was there was a few tunes that that really probably should have got to number one. And I hate to admit that Right Said Fred should have done, but it was a very popular tune at the time, even if it is kind of corny as hell now. Um it um uh, it really should have been it really should have got number one, but unfortunately, uh Yeah, I'm too sexy. I remember I'm too sexy being number two. Uh, I was, I I'm sure there was another one as well. Another like really, really kind of quite good song that should have should have made number one, uh, but unfortunately, for some reason that Brian Adams tune was just at number one for an eternity. Okay, so. Our position is three four BB. That's what we're looking at here. Three four BB. Uh, oops. So these are our types zero zero zero. So if I just go now, yeah. So something is removing that value for some reason. Why would that be removing it? Why would that type be being set to zero? So we add the power up in here. Is the reset being called before? Maybe this is being called before. Ah, yes, I bet that's it actually. So let's have a look. So map loader. Well, actually, no, there is no reset being called. Well, let's 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 test that idea. Let's put a let's put a breakpoint in here. I just want to point out as well. The only reason I know the uh, the charts for that exact period is because it was round about that period that I was kind of listening to the charts. I'm not like some crazy person who knows every single chart hit from 1980 onwards. Um, it just happens to be the one era of my life where I probably was listening to the charts every week. Not that people who know the charts are crazy. It's just I, I, I 
my brain is full of other things. Okay, so this is where it's been stored. So if I just step one like that and then go and have a look at 34BB, I can see there it's been set. Uh, then the reset is happening. Why is this happening? In it is happening. Oh, hang on. Yeah, go. Um, we load the map. Oh, which does load the initial. Okay, this I think this is just because. This is just because of the way I'm loading it in. I think if I load it in normally, it should be fine. So um, I'm just going to get rid of the breakpoints. And I should be able to emulate loading in properly by leaving the screen uh, and coming back into the screen again. And then it should load in properly, I think. It's just it isn't at the moment because it's loading here uh, before anything else is initialized. So. So it's not it's not a good test where really the way I've done it, but uh. okay. So I think if I go back here now. Oh, cool. all right. So it's flashing now. So that is that is correct. It should disappear eventually as well, unless I've yes. There we go. Okay. So just need to turn that on now. Okay. I'm not going to do much more. I've got about twenty minutes left, so I'm going to. I'm not sure. Well, I can make it make it move towards start moving towards the player anyway, possibly, which I guess would be in the update. Um, Uh, do we have yeah we have some we have some kind of distance lookup tables don't we for the uh for the character stuff we we'll probably just need to round some numbers down to make this work uh properly flash disappear sweet okay that's good and that should come back if I go off and come back again. Yeah, so add power up just adds it. There we go. He's Python 4 round. <laughs> oh, God. I got so annoyed with that uh, the other day. It, just, it was really frustrating to find out that they don't actually use proper rounding. They use some shitty bankers rounding. I mean, am I the only one who thinks 0 0.5 is not in the fucking middle? It is not in the middle. I'm sorry. In in the in the set of numbers, in the sequence of numbers from 1.0 to 1.9 recurring, 0 0.5 is not in the middle. It's in the upper upper half. Only just in the upper half, but it is in the upper half. Uh, all right. <laughs> okay, so power ups working. We just need to make the move towards the player now. So uh, we do have some behavior like this already. So in I uh, cannot for the life of me remember where this is now. So let's just go and have a look. It's like a proximity thing. I think it's probably in entities, actually. Just get some of these screen macro I can get rid of. Uh, multiplex I can get rid of. Screen I'll keep. Load I'll keep. Game loop I'll keep. Okay. And then over this side. Yeah, that's probably fine on that side as well. Uh, 
Looking at the high scores now, Hayes is, is kind of quite out in front. Uh, wow, there's a lot of people on the scoreboard now. That's kind of cool. We're up to 21 on the high score table. That's kind of cool. Cool. All right, so uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure in here we've got. Oh, okay. We oh maybe it's further down. Uh, get distance to distance player to entity. Okay, so I have a jump table. Have we got a data table somewhere? Ah, right. We have a square. It's table squares. Okay, new had something. Okay, so we've got these values. So this allows us to go up to 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 on any one set. Well, hang on, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 11. So 11 on either side of a triangle. Uh, so the, the uh, adjacent and opposite uh, sides of a triangle uh, can be 11 units in either direction. So what we need to do is we need to work out the distance between the center of the sprite and the center of the bonus. Now, because they're both sprites, we can just do this with the, the top left corner. It doesn't need to be center to center, because if you take the center of one and the center of the other and move it to the top corner, it's the same. It's the same distance. You haven't changed anything. You've just transposed it. Did I just drag a line? Seriously? Oh, yeah, I did. Thank you. Ooh. Thanks, Andy. That would have been that would have been a pain in the ass to find. Um, yeah, that is a very good eye. I didn't even realise I'd done that. <laughs> Bonus points for you there. We need the AMK table, don't we? That's what we need. The AMK league. Yeah, it would have been, wouldn't it? I'd have been looking at it thinking, what? Why am I doing that and not doing it there? In fact, what would that have happened? That would have... Uh, that would have... Oh, the, the, the power-up would have never... Um, would have never disappeared. It would have stayed. Stayed on the screen the whole time. Never flashed. Never disappeared. Because the timer wouldn't have been decrementing. It would have been decreasing the value, but never storing it again. It would constantly be skipping over it. So that would have been good. Well, I mean, it would have probably been fairly easy to find, but it would have been a nightmare to work out what what had happened. Why, well, not a nightmare, but it would have been confusing as to why that happened. Okay, so we probably need to do this in the Power Up update. Um, so what we can do is at this point here, uh, we can jump to move to player uh, and this routine just needs to make sure that it doesn't destroy the x so if it does need to do anything on the x uh, we need to put it back again so what does move to player need to do okay move to player needs to take the difference in x and the difference in y um, and when they reach a certain value move towards the player in, in in that particular direction um move top player <laughs> uh, not amiga <laughs> okay so this should be relatively easy to do uh we can use the half value for the x that's absolutely fine so um let's go ahead and grab uh data dot x half x pos Right, let's let's work out what we need to do. So we need to take um, x equals um, half x pos minus player x pos half player x pos 
and then I'd say we should divide that by four, and that will give us our, our x roughly um, distance in in characters, uh, and then y equals uh, y pos minus uh, player y pos uh, divided by four. Uh, divided by eight so then that gives us the the distance between uh the players in x and y and then what we can do is we can compare these so the first thing we do if any of these is uh, greater than uh well greater than 11 we can't we can't look it up so we'd immediately exit if they are less than 11 then we take the value from this table and we add it for each one so we add those two values together and then that will give us the the distance squared and we can use that to work out whether or not we're in range. Um, now, making it move along that line is going to be a little bit trickier. Uh, I need to have a think about that, actually. I might, it might, might be a good time to leave, actually, because I think this is a bit more than I'm going to be able to do in 10 minutes. Uh, so I'll probably leave it here, I think. So what we'll do on the next stream then, in that case, is we're going to work on this piece of code here, which is going to move the arrow towards the player. Um, what that's going to do at first is it's just going to make the thing follow us around. We're not going to actually pick it up. Uh, but then on uh, once we've got that working, we can make sure that we can actually pick it up. We'll, we'll, we'll add the sprite to sprite uh, collision routine in and make sure we pick that sprite up and change the bullet system as well. So we need to go through and do the bullets and the power-ups um, so it's actually quite a big system um, but I think we can probably get most of it done on the next stream if not the stream after I would say um, uh, okay yeah I think I'll call it a night here then okay in that case let's go and find someone to raid uh, who's playing what Honda's playing Bard's Tale, Chinese Hawkey's playing. Oh, what's that? That looks interesting. It looks like a NES game. All right. Chinese Hawk it is then. Oh, is Retro Coder on? Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah, let's raid Retro Coder again. Sorry, sorry for those wanting to raid Chinese Hawk. Why am I not seeing it on my list though? Oh, have I? Do you know what? It's because I've. No, I did follow him though. Why is that not appearing? That's weird. Okay, let's go and raid. Let's go and raid uh, Retro Coder then. So Retro Coder TV has been doing. Um, been doing some. What was it? Uh, Spectrum Next coding as well. So uh, it's quite interesting. Z80, unfortunately, but um, it's still interesting. Assembly coding is always going to be a priority for these raids. So. Um, okay, take care, guys. As I say, there'll be no stream on Saturday. Uh, I'm going to be taking the, the day off to build my computer and play some games. Uh, but I'll be back on, on Tuesday as normal. And then the following Saturday, we'll give away the Spectrum. Um, the uh, the, the uh, Spectrum Pi Zero. We'll give that away on stream. Okay, cool. Right, thanks, guys. And see you all on Tuesday. Cheerio.